Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice, Print, Roleplay. In this episode, I'm going to teach you the basics of adding supports to a model in Cura. Alright, let's get to it. So for our testing, I'm going to use this decorative Charmander model from Filament's Folly. Now the first thing we need to do is determine whether or not this model needs supports. And the easiest way to do that is to simply turn off supports and slice the model. Then use the layer view here on the right to scroll down through your model and look for any areas that are unsupported. In other words, areas that are going to print completely in midair. So you can see here that that is exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take a closer look. So you can see if I go down to the first layer, you can see we have a good flat surface on the bottom of each foot. This is going to make a really good attachment to your build plate. I always use a brim, which is what this blue area is here, just because it's a very small amount of material. It really increases bed adhesion, so I pretty much always use it, and I do recommend using it, but we'll get into settings in just a bit. But from here, if we go up on the layer view, you can see how each one of these layers of the foot is built off of the previous layer. So there's no need for any supports here because everything's being supported upon itself until we get to the area here in the center. This is an unsupported island, which means it's just floating in midair. If we scroll down under it, you can see how there's nothing here. So all of these layers, as they're being built until they connect here on this side and here on this side until they bridge that gap, all of these layers down here are just gonna be spaghetti on your build plate. Now, best case scenario, you have a flat spot here on the bottom of the model. It looks a little weird, but you still finish the model. Worst case scenario, all of these pieces of spaghetti then get caught up in the nozzle and get drug around and potentially knock the other pieces of the model off the build plate, which ruins the whole print. So this is a really important habit to get into until you get a good feel for what overhangs are and when you need supports. It's a good idea to just kind of look at your model like this, break it down and look at the layer view to figure out if supports are needed. Now, real quick, before I start getting into support settings, I wanted to mention a plugin that is extremely helpful, especially when you're just starting out. And that's going to be the Settings Guide by Ghostkeeper. In my opinion, this is one of the most useful plugins you can get for Cura. Let me show you how it works. So all I have to do is go down to the Supports tab, click on this box that says Generate Supports, and that's going to open up all of my different support settings. And then the beauty of this plugin is that if I hover over any of these settings, you'll get this big detailed description that has tons of useful information about each setting. This is such an invaluable tool, and I still use this all the time, because there are literally hundreds of different settings in Cura, and I cannot memorize all of them. So like I said, if you're just starting out, this is an absolutely invaluable plugin. Now the first thing I'd recommend doing is going up to any of these tabs and clicking on this icon here. That's going to bring up a list of settings that you can check and uncheck, which will make them visible or not visible in your settings list here. What I would recommend you do is go over to this check mark, uncheck it, and check it again to make sure that you have access to all the different settings Cura has to offer. Now that might seem a little overwhelming, but if you have this settings guide, it makes things a lot less confusing, a lot less overwhelming. Just in my opinion, I'd rather have access to all of the settings and be able to make little changes here and there rather than only having access to a couple of them and then end up getting frustrated because maybe I'm making adjustments to a setting that isn't really having much impact on my supports. So as far as support structure goes, I typically use normal supports. I know a lot of people swear by tree supports. I've had good luck with them in the past, but I've also had some really frustrating results. So for me, they're kind of hit or miss. You can absolutely play with this, and maybe I'll do a video later on explaining um, some tree support settings. But for right now, like I said, I don't use them a ton. Um, I find that they have limited use, so I'm going to stick with a normal support structure. Next is going to be support placement. Now your options are everywhere or only touching build plate. So you can see here on the right, this is what only touching build plate looks like. And over on the left here is everywhere. Everywhere means that supports are going to be put anywhere that Cura thinks needs to be supported, including inside of the model, which can sometimes be a pain to remove. So depending on the geometry of the model, depending on what you determine needs to be supported, you may opt to only use touching build plate or using the everywhere function. Next up is going to be support overhang angle. And now this is something that Printing out a simple test will give you a ton of information and help you learn what your printer is capable of handling and at what layer height. So let's take a look at that test. This model here is an overhang test. There are two things that are really important about this model to make sure that you get good results. First is going to be that you don't want to print it with supports. You want to make sure that this is only being printed under its own support. 
Second, you want to make sure that you use all the same settings, minus your support settings, that you plan on printing with whatever filament you're using. And that's because if you were to print this with a layer height of say 0.2, when you're actually going to use a layer height of 0.1, again, you're going to give yourself results that aren't necessarily going to be compatible or applicable to the layer height that you plan on using or the settings that you plan on using. So just make sure, minus support settings, you use all the same settings for this that you're going to use for this. And the reason that this test is so helpful is because every printer is going to be slightly different in terms of what it's capable of. So it really depends on what your cooling setup is, your ambient temperatures, what type of filament that you're using. There's a ton of different factors that go into whether or not your printer is going to be able to handle a 55 degree overhang versus a 65 degree overhang. So this test is a really great way to show you what your printer is capable of with your current settings and your current filament. But if you don't want to print that model, then a good safe bet is going to be 50 degrees. Most printers can handle that without any issues. And just real quick, this right here is an example of a higher support overhang angle. This is probably 55 degrees. And this is an example of a lower support overhang angle. This is probably 40 or 45 degrees. And you can see how it basically doubles the amount of supports that you're going to need, which will also drastically increase your print time. So that's just something to keep in mind. Next up is going to be your support pattern. Now, Kira has a ton of different support patterns. Typically, I use lines for about 95% of my prints just because I feel like they give a really good result while being really easy to remove, um, especially with some of the other settings I'm about to show you. However, if you want to try to use something that is going to be more rigid, if you feel like this is going to be too flimsy, um, then you can always try to use uh, zigzag, which is going to be a much more solid support structure. You can see how it's all connected together and that's good and bad. It's good because it's going to give your print a really solid structure to build off of, but these are also harder to remove. So keep that in mind. There's always a kind of a give and take with these settings. I would recommend starting with lines and then if you're having bad results or if you just don't think that they're going to hold up well, then you can go to zigzag. But my recommendation is usually to go with lines. Next up is going to be support wall line count. I leave this at zero just because when I'm using line supports, I want them to be separate pieces that can be detached really easily. If you were to um, add a value of like one in here, then it's going to connect all these supports together and they're going to be a much more solid structure, similar to what I was saying zigzags would be. Um, so if you're using lines, I would recommend leaving this at zero. Next up is connect support lines. It's a very similar idea. Again, I leave this unchecked. Next up is support density. This setting is definitely something I recommend you play around with for each model, because there are certain times where a model might need less dense supports, meaning less support in any given area, versus there are other times where you'll need more supports. You'll need a much more dense support structure. So increasing this value gives you more supports, but again, makes it harder to remove, increases print time. So there's that trade off again. So keep that in mind. As for what setting to use here, as I said, it's going to be different for each model, but for larger models, I'd recommend a range of 12% to 20%, and then for smaller models with finer details, I'd recommend a range of 25% to 35%, and making sure that you're slicing it after each one of these changes that you're making to see what kind of supports you're getting and if they're going to fit that model. So I leave everything else at default until I get down to enable support brim. I will pretty much always have this setting on just because it creates this sort of lattice work on the bottom here that gives a greater bond between the supports and the build plate. I always have this setting enabled because there are times where a very small support will be printed, it doesn't have much of an attachment point, and it could potentially fall over, which could cause a lot of problems later on. So having this extra bit of material down here to give it more of an attachment to your build plate can be really helpful and just a huge time saver. So I do recommend always having this setting on. Again, I leave everything at default until I get down to support Z distance. Now, I don't want to be dramatic, but support Z distance is probably one of the most important settings that you can change in order to get better supports. Let me explain. So the light blue area here represents your supports. The dark blue area represents your model. Support Z distance is what's going to determine how much of a gap you have here between your supports and your model. Now this can make a huge difference because if the value is too small, then your supports will bond with the model and it'll just be one large chunk of plastic and you'll never get these off. But on the other side, if this gap is too big, then the supports really aren't going to be doing anything and you'll have really nasty layers or parts of your model will start to just fall apart because it's not getting supported correctly. So this setting is really important. But there really isn't any kind of one size fits all number that you can just plug in here. That's why you'll probably have to do some of your own testing, but I can give you some information to kind of help you along your way. 
First off, make note of what your layer height is. Currently I'm using a layer height of 0.2, so I'm using a support Z distance of 0.2 as well. That gives me one layer worth of gap between where the supports stop and the model starts. That's given me good results with most of my printers at this layer height, but you'll definitely have to do some testing to see what your printer is capable of. One more thing that's really important you keep in mind is that Cura will always round this up to the nearest multiple of the layer height. So for example, again, I'm using a layer height of 0.2. If I tried to make my support Z distance value 0.3, Cura would automatically round this up to 0.4 because that's a multiple of the layer height, whereas 0.3 is not. And 0.4 is a pretty big gap. You're talking about two whole layers. So again, this is another value that you'll want to play around with to make sure that you understand what each one of your printers is capable of. And remember that each layer height is going to require a different Z distance value. But a good starting point is to use a value equal to your layer height and adjust from there. Now, I don't change any of these values until I get down to enable support interface. This is another setting I think is really important and I use pretty much all the time. So essentially, it builds this sort of mesh or lattice type structure in between your supports and the model itself. And as I move up here, on the layer view, you can see that this mesh structure builds out around the model in a much more detailed way than the supports themselves do. So it's almost like the line supports are the general structure and the interface layer is a more detailed structure that is only built where it's needed to give that really focused support on those small details. So I really like these support settings in combination with each other. So this is typically what I use and it gives me really good results. So I have all three of these enabled and I typically use a value of 0.8 for the support interface thickness. And then I typically have my density set to 90%. I leave everything else at default until I get down to the interface pattern. I like using a grid pattern. It's like supports. There's a bunch of different options in here and you can check them out and see what works best for you. I found that grid gives me the best results with the settings that I typically use. And then I don't change any other settings in the support settings window. The only other thing that I would recommend you do, and this is just a general recommendation, uh, I do go down to build plate adhesion and I usually have a brim set up. I leave all the default settings here in place, but the brim is what I was talking about earlier. It creates a larger pad around smaller objects of your, your model so that it gets a better attachment point to the build plate. This can be really helpful. It takes a very small amount of material and it can absolutely make the difference between your models staying on the build plate for a, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 hour print versus it coming off at hour 15 of a 30 hour print and you wasting all that time and filament and just getting really frustrated. So I typically always use it. If it's a really large flat model, it's not necessary, but if it's a small model with a couple of fine points that start out on the build plate and that's the only attachment point, it's a good idea to use the brim. All right, we've got all of our support settings filled out. We've got the model sliced, but before we preview it in the slicer, I wanna talk about today's sponsor. This episode of Slice Print Roleplay is brought to you by Lethal Shadows. Most people know Lethal Shadows for providing high quality models that are printed on demand to suit your needs, but they're quickly becoming your one-stop shop for all things tabletop gaming. In addition to incredibly detailed models, they also have sets of dice, fantasy themed coasters and notebooks, and they just released their own line of paint. So, whether you need the perfect model for your next session, or some awesome gaming gear, I definitely recommend you go check out Lethal Shadows. So, real quick, I want to give a disclaimer. I'm not saying that these settings will work for everyone on every printer with every model. 3D printing is way too varied for that, and I really just wanted to come in and give some basic tips on how to support models and how to change your settings to get better results. I think that these are a good place to start, but like everything with 3D printing, it will really depend on your setup. So adjust things to see what works best for you. All right, so I hope you now understand the basics of adding supports to a model in Cura. As always, if you have any questions or you're running into issues on your 3D printing journey, you can reach out to me in the comments down below or on Instagram, or you can join my Facebook group. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel and I really appreciate it. And if you like the work that I'm doing here and you want to support my channel, you can find all my Patreon information down below. All right, let's go print something.